Well, there is tell you something I was thinking about watching these talks. I, mean, I thought these were it was an amazing series of talks today, and one thing that was amazing was just kind of the sweep of these things. There's so much mathematics, physics, so much going on in, in your talk and at Whitman's and, and in your talk that the um, it, it's kind of the opposite of, of, of what you normally think about the history of what's happening to these fields. It's about them becoming more and more specialized, and people becoming more and more isolated from each other. But these are subjects where you know, all these different things are coming together, and um, I was kind of wondering, you know, what you thought about that, and I think one, there was a question Richard had been asking about, what kind of advice is there for students or people who want to learn about this? How do you absorb this kind of fantastic amount of material in very different kinds? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, it's difficult for students, because, I mean, they want a topic to work on, and so they, they have to focus, but they need a certain amount of the background, too. Um, but, you know, so there's a degree of specialization that has to take place with the students to you know, write a thesis, but it has to be set in, the, in this wider background. And, uh, how you actually sort of integrate the, all the other influences in, 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 into, a, say, a student's work is very, very, very difficult. You know, what is it, you know, they'll come on day one and say, what is it I have to know to do this? And it's difficult to actually uh, explain that, but this type of meeting is, is some way of Getting some way towards that. And also, it's kind of a question of kind of what you see, you know, having lived through these last few, few decades of, of this. I mean, what do you see happening? You know, are we going to see this kind of further unification? You like to talk about grand unification, right? I wrote at some point that the Institute of Language program was grand unified theory of mathematics, partly tongue in cheek, but it's true that uh, it's, it's, it connects so many different areas. And to me, this is a lure for half the students because I can tell you about my story. How did I? I come to the Lens program. I was studying the presentations of interdimensional reality. And uh, I didn't think of, I, I heard about the Lens program. That was back in the uh, you know, early 90s. And then I, had a, I was fortunate to, that exactly at that time, Dreamfold uh, was, was thinking about this new approach to the Lens program, which used my work on, was taking on representations of Katsumori algebra. And when he told me about this, that made me curious. So that was my entry point. And this, that's a remarkable thing about the Lens program that. Everyone can find an entry point. A lot of people can find their own entry point. And once I was inside, I was just so fascinated with the fact that there's so many connections. And then I was curious about it and I wanted to study them. And so, and that provided additional motivation for me to kind of. And so that's what I think. That I think that for students, they don't need to know everything at once. They need to find their own entry point. And, and that's the beauty of the subject that there's so many possibilities. There's so many portals into the, into the subject. Then how do you find the experience of trying to, you know, you come in from one point of view or one area, and then you know you're, you're trying to learn all of a sudden there's just this completely different kind of mathematics, which is relevant, like the, like, like number theory. So That's what, right. what, how did you kind of encounter number theory? What, what so I just started to learn, and uh, well, at that time I was I just came to I was just at Harvard, my first year at Harvard, and Dunford came for the first semester, and so I actually had this great resource that I could just knock on the door of his office and ask the question. And then I was just reading and uh, attending conferences like this and talking to people. And just gradually I, I, got, I got more and more interested. And so today I talked about this the three different um, sort of columns, three different threads of the language program number theory, curves over finite fields, and the conference curves. And so I started from the right most columns, so to speak. Mm -hmm. But then I, I, was more, I, I moved gradually to, to the you know, middle and the left one. And so, but one doesn't have to do that. I was just very curious, I guess. And I, and I in general, I'm very interested in. Connect, you know, things when, when there are different subjects are connected. But I think that one can find plenty of stuff even within a particular, um, uh, you know, part of a language program. But oftentimes, it's really advantageous to try to take an object from one of them and use it in another one. And uh, I guess just a case in point, which we discussed today, so Nigel gave a beautiful lecture about how he invented his modular spaces, and he was motivated by questions in differential geometry and physics, right? Hyperkeller, manifolds. Yeah, that's, that's right. But you know, I mean, we all have different attitudes when we do research. I mean, I, I tend to be a, a problem solver, you know, but, but it's, it's underneath, underneath it all. It's the same thing, but trying to understand why something happens and, and how it happens. Uh, so it was it was focusing on the particular equations that, uh, that got me into this. But you know, it turned out that those equations, I felt that there was something important. I felt that there was something there. Because there was something in four and three dimensions. There is something in two dimensions which has to be even more important because mm -hmm. of this two to two rather than three to one. Mm -hmm. 
And so gradually it, it, uh, you know, it emerged, actually. Um, I didn't know what I was getting into, but uh, I just had a feeling that there was something there. Yeah. But, but the, what I'm trying to say here also is that um, your, this was work uh, squarely within the realm of complex differential geometry. Oh, yes. yes. And yes. What, what, a, what an amazing energy came out of, uh, from, from co taking your modular spaces to the realm of cars over finite fields. Yeah. And using them effect, so effectively for solving you know, decades long uh, conjecture, uh, sort of fundamental dilemma. Oh, yeah. And yeah. that sort of really advanced us in the sense that we, can, we now see that these objects, which look to be so far away from each other, are actually not that far away. Yeah. Yeah, so, so how do you feel about this you know, this use at the fundamental level, level by Ngo, and how much are you able to appreciate or understand how Yeah, I, I, know, so, I mean, I'm totally amazed by it, but uh, I mean, uh, you know, it's so far away. It's, it's a use which is so far away from the, my, the origins, and from my point of view, I find it really difficult to, to really take, take it all in. But um, the, the idea of Systematic compactification of Jacobians or uh, abelian varieties, which, which came into this, was uh, I guess it was something which, uh, once I'd seen the integral system, you know, it really uh, I did think there was something something really good going on there. But I, I had no idea that it could be could be transported into a, an area as far away from the original. It, it actually just to solve such a practical, such a specific yeah, problem. That's right. It's amazing. Is right, and I, and I think it indicates that there's a lot more to come. So well, I think on this note, we should probably go back and stay here. The, the, the last thing we need to talk of, of today's, yeah. of today's lectures. Okay, thank you.